Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, dear colleagues, distinguished delegates. I come before you this morning deeply disturbed and distraught. Only this Tuesday, we mark the anniversary of the United Nations Charter, the day on which our organization was founded out of the ashes of the most heinous crimes against humanity in history. While there is little to incline us to celebration, we nevertheless honored the values and principles that have anchored our, our organization these last 75 years. Yet again, we gather amidst the gravest escalation of violence and hostility in the Middle East in decades. Perhaps the most dramatic and difficult to countenance was the Al-Ahi Baptist Hospital attack that killed several hundred people in a single incident. It is an unthinkable crime that must offend our human sensibilities. The worsening tension, the unspeakable violence, the harrowing suffering must end now. I once again condemn the attack on Israel by Hamas on the 7th of October and reject the killings and the taking of civilian hostages, including women, children, and the elderly. The brutality of the Hamas assaults is shocking and unacceptable and has no place, I repeat, has no place in our world. Similarly, I condemn and reject the indiscriminate targeting of innocent civilians in the Gaza Strip and the scale of destruction of critical infrastructure by Israel. The ceaseless bombardment of the Gaza Strip by Israel and its consequences are deeply alarming. The right of self-defense does not and cannot lawfully give license to undertake indiscriminate and disproportionate reprisal. Thousands, especially children, women, and the elderly are being killed, injured, maimed, and forcefully displaced. And hospitals are running tragically low on basic medical supplies. The rules of war dictate that on the ground, civilians and civilian installations must always be protected at all costs. And here, in this august chamber, our preeminent priority must be to protect and to save civilian lives. It is also regrettable that among the appalling loss of lives our United Nations personnel, upon whom this organization depends to provide and deliver critical humanitarian support and other services to millions of Palestinians in dire need. I express my sincere solidarity with all those who have lost their loved ones, their homes, and their sense of security or belonging. And I join the Secretary General in expressing my deepest condolences to the families of the 35 UN staff members who have lost their lives in the noble cause of humanitarian service. I also take this opportunity to pay tribute to the entire UNRWA staff and other humanitarian workers for their continued unwavering and heroic efforts under these very distressing circumstances. Excellencies, all parties to this conflict must abide by international humanitarian law. 
and immediately cease, excuse me, immediately create the necessary conditions to allow for an opening of humanitarian corridor to the Gaza Strip. We must ensure that urgently needed life-saving assistance reaches those in need, from the delivery of basic foodstuff to the safe passage of humanitarian aid, humanitarian and medical staff. Any action to the contrary to deprive the people of Gaza unimpeded access to essential livelihood supply would be a clear violation of their human rights and an affront to international humanitarian law. We, the United Nations, cannot allow our fundamental principles of human rights and of international law to be compromised. As the United Nations, we are obliged to uphold them without any conditions or reservations, and certainly without any exceptions. Over the years, the United Nations has conducted successful humanitarian operations that have had significant impacts. I am both appreciative of and encouraged by the Israeli cooperation that led to the successful passage into Gaza of some aid trucks from Egypt. But this is clearly a drop in the ocean of Gaza's two and a half million inhabitants, almost half of whom are children. Excellencies, dear colleagues, at this juncture, the most immediate step is clear. The violence must cease, and further bloodshed must be prevented. I call for the prompt and unconditional release of all hostages. I also call for an immediate, unconditional humanitarian ceasefire. And I also call for an immediate unconditional opening of corridors of humanitarian assistance and relief. The only path to a comprehensive, just, and lasting peace is a negotiated two-state solution consistent with international law, the UN Charter, and relevant United Nations resolutions, a solution that fulfills Israel's legitimate needs for security, and that fulfills the state of Palestine's legitimate aspirations for an independent state. I urge all parties, state and non-state, to set aside their animosities and focus instead on averting war through prioritizing saving lives. This means the core, this means focusing on the core purpose of our charter. It means engaging in dialogue and harnessing the support of the Secretary General and his special coordinator, Tor Wenisland. I also welcome international initiatives that focus on consensus building, spreading accurate and verified information, and putting an end to the violence and despair. Given the gravity of the situation on the ground, this cannot be just another business as usual session. I urge the membership to use today's session not to further fan the flames of hate, division, and revenge. Let us seize the opportunity instead to unify our purpose and our actions to save lives and to end violence. Let me assure you of my deep personal commitment 
to support any and all initiatives to this end. I thank you.